my friends. I'm live and I'm here on the new moon in March 2023. Um, but if you're watching this later, it'll still be relevant. And I woke up this morning with some inspiration and some musings and some insights that I felt inspired to share with you. Sometimes the urge just takes over my body and I think that it's totally okay to desire to be witnessed in your discoveries and your creativity and I would love to inspire you all, all the dancers out there who follow me to embrace the part of you that wants to be witnessed. Embrace the part of you that is working through difficulty and also to feel brave enough to share yourself and continually combat that monster of perfectionism that haunts so many of us and me going live right now with you on a whim is part of me um, battling my own monster of perfectionism because I think I've been doing pretty good with it lately, but dang, it shows up in all kinds of mysterious and unexpected ways. So it's really helpful to notice when we are not sharing ourselves or not feeling witnessed and seen and when that's tied to a desire to get it right the first time and to be perfect the first time and that's always holding us back from moving forward and learning lessons because there are no mistakes there is no failure there's only learning so i am here to share with you what's been on my mind i hear that the vernal equinox and this new moon is a great time to balance our shadow and light in that the days and the nights are of equal length and I'm also just feeling extra inspired by mother nature lately. I have done some pruning to my plants and this fiddle leaf fig is growing new leaves constantly and it just spurted out a new branch and I didn't do notching or anything. I'm so excited to see it grow and I did try notching for the first time to try to bush out my umbrella plant, my chefleta. So I've just been really into like embracing all the new growth and the new insights and inspiration. And I've been having dreams the last few days that have shown me what my conscious mind is not aware of. And I love all the information that our dreams bring to us because really I like, I am not aware of this stuff in my conscious mind. And then I wake up from my dreams and I'm like, wow, that's what my subconscious is working on. Okay, what am I to learn from this information? And over the last week, I've had a lot of jealousy dreams. I've had a couple of dreams of professional jealousy. I've had some dreams of intimate partner jealousy. And I've also had dreams of people who I've had grudges with um, forgiving me and saying that it's water under the bridge. And I think all of this stuff is coming up to show me that it's just time to release some of these things. And I notice in my body the desire to move into the jealousy. Like it has an addictive quality to it. Like I, I must get some kind of satisfaction or some kind of energy or motivation from leaning into that feeling. And it's all, it, it comes and I almost relish it and it's the weirdest thing because I really believe that it is part of a belief system that is incorrect. The, the idea that there is scarcity, that there's not enough room at the top, that there is not enough resources, there's not enough love, care, financial abundance for everyone when I know in my conscious mind that there is. So it's showing me, my dreams are showing me that I'm still carrying a belief system and I'm still addicted to uh, an emotion that I do believe is holding me back from reaching my true heart's desires. And the tricky thing is that I don't think it has been holding me back uh, previously or rather it gives me the illusion that I am succeeding or reaching my goals when I allow the fire of competition to motivate my creative actions, you know, to have to motivate me to um, offer something to the world, to share something online, to make a dance, to uh, perfect my technique so it's even more impressive. Like that all has brought me 
to a place where I think that's where the addiction comes from. Like, oh, this has worked for me in the past. Leaning into my uh, concept of competition has worked for me to develop myself as an artist. And I think my dreams have been showing me that that time is up and that it's actually creating a plateau and a cap and it's a belief system that needs to be rooted out. So I wrote some release statements and some manifesting statements for the new moon to help me work into this new belief system that has been coming for a long time. It has been coming for a long time. I um, have learned a lot of lessons in my life and I have become a lot more clear about my purpose as a human being and a friend and an artist. And I wanna encourage all of you artists out there to get really clear on your purpose and to evaluate the belief systems that may be harming you or hindering your progress. So hopefully by me sharing this, you'll feel inspired to do the same. Um, so I'm just gonna go through them one by one and then as I feel inspired to elaborate, I will. I'm also curious while I read through these, um, does it resonate and also what are you doing on this new moon to ritually embrace the shadow and light within you and to move forward and bring into being everything that you dream and desire. I release the belief system of scarcity. I hold the belief system of abundance. I think that's really what it just comes down to. That's the basics of it. My body was habituated to seek the fire of comparison and competition in order to motivate me to take actions I thought were necessary for my survival. My body is now habituated to seek the powerful current of trust and love to inspire me to take easeful action, effective easeful action that sustainably supports my purpose. And then it became important to me after I wrote that to identify the purpose. My purpose is to feel joy, pleasure, and connection in my body, creativity, and mother nature. And I added to it, but I just want to pause right there and say that I was tempted to write, my purpose is to help others, my purpose is to share, da da da. And lately I've just been wanting to validate that joy and pleasure and fun is an avenue toward healing, is an avenue toward revolution is an avenue for social change, is an avenue for climate justice. Like there's so many things that we can do and I support, you know, evaluating our actions and our consumption patterns and our belief systems and adjusting them so we can make a more equitable society. And I also want to encourage everyone to lean into your own joy and to feel that you have the right to be joyous and you have the right to feel pleasure and that your joy and pleasure and your connection to your body is actually making a positive difference on others just by you being a joyful human being, just by you having a, a relationship with your body, with mother nature, with the universe, with your higher power, um, that alone is revolutionary and encouraging for others. And you, it doesn't even have to be in the spirit of helping others. It can be just you enjoying your life. My mission is to share this joy and connection with others through dance, music, art, community, humor, words, and actions in order to spark within us remembrance of our divine oneness with all of life. I think so much of my internal turmoil can be healed by remembering my oneness, my oneness with the other human beings I interact with, the human beings I have not met yet, my oneness with all of life, the plants, the animals, and um, with my creator and the animating force of life. I trust and love myself slash the great mystery <laughs> because 
I am the mystery and the mystery is me. And if I could stand on a pulpit and encourage anyone to do anything at this moment, it would be to trust yourself. Trust yourself and know that yourself is part of something bigger. I welcome the guidance of my ancestors and guardians through my dreams, intuitions, sounds, and sights. I am patient in the understanding that my desires are coming to fruition in the time that is best for my highest good and the highest good of all involved. I release unnecessary and untrue limitations. I have the power and capability and support to create everything and anything my true heart desires. I am loved and cared for. I am so incredibly grateful for this life. I savor the juice of all the feelings and experiences that come to me. I allow them and I move them through my body. I'm hoping that this list of release statements and manifestations inspires you to write some for yourself. Um, and I am hoping that it inspires me to continue right, releasing over and over again, releasing the limitations and the belief systems that are not true and do not serve me or anyone else. And at this moment, um, scarcity is the, the belief system that I care to release and I am really leaning into the belief system of abundance and I really do want to be leaning into I am leaning into the current of love and the current of trust and knowing that I am powerful I am capable I am loved I am seen and I have the ability to create everything my heart's desires. And so do you. So do you. And don't let anyone tell you that you enjoying being in your body, or you having fun, or you feeling pleasure, isn't making a positive impact on the world. Because I think it's one of the most important things that we can do to make a positive impact on the world. So never feel ashamed for your joy and never feel that you don't have the right to feel pleasure in your body. Okay, I think to finish out this pep talk, if anyone has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Thank you so much for saying that you want to learn some more from me. Um, these topics have been coming up a lot inside of the Cohesion Collective, which is my online group coaching program. We have such a great time there. And we've been talking a lot about this idea in our coaching calls that we have with one another every week. Um, so if you're interested in joining that group and getting one-on-one -on -one and group support from me, then you just go to the link in my bio and apply to that program. It only takes two minutes to fill out the survey, the questionnaire, and the reason why I have the questionnaire is because I wanna make sure that your goals are goals that I can help you with. Um, and that you're serious about your journey as a dancer. And I make these pep talks for all movers and all artists and all human beings. And I especially give my focus and energy to dancers in the realm of Prakshraki, transcultural dance, belly dance. And I am especially passionate about those dance forms. But if you're watching this video and you're just here for a dose of inspiration, you're very welcome. And I see Vicky in the chat, who's a member of the Cohesion Collective. And thank you so much, Mariana, for expressing your gratitude to me as well. And I am happy to read that you really resonated with the oneness with all. And you're asking, when did I first experience this? Ooh, I get to experience it um, on a regular basis. Uh, but I, like Alan Watts says, you know, it's a, I'm sure somebody said it before him, um, life is a, a journey of forgetting and remembering, forgetting our true nature so we get lost in the drama of our human existence because that's what we're freaking here to do and then remembering the truth of our oneness with 
the creator, with life force, with what I choose to call the great mystery or mother nature. You know, that's who I'm devoted to. That's what my life is about being in connection with. And um, I also have had moments where after a long period of isolation, like many of us experienced, I felt so much compassion for myself, so much love for myself because I saw all the growth in me and I saw my connection to everything. And that was, I'm crying right now, <laughs> just thinking about what a powerful experience that was. And I was literally just sitting on my couch. <laughs> I just cleaned my house and I was listening to a playlist that my partner made for me that was very full of love and very ecstatic and very fun. And I just felt uh, that I deserve love and I felt capable of giving that love to myself. And I, I want others to feel that. I want others to feel that connection. And that's why I come on here to share. That's why I make dance. Um, I also teach a lot about the professional side of being an artist. Pretty soon inside the Cohesion Collective, I'm teaching a workshop on how to earn an income with belly dance. I've been really getting into budgeting, not just expense tracking, but like actual budgeting, saving for retirement. I wanna dispense knowledge that I wish I had had when I was a younger dancer. And um, I'm really excited about sharing like the professional inside scoop. And always I'm going to infuse it with uh, just a dose of inspiration to encourage people to do your art out of love for life. So of course I want us to be able to earn an income, for us to feel validated, for us to be seen, for us to seek out and get opportunities. And I put in a lot of resources to help people do that. And I always want to remind people that it's not that I should do this in my dance. I have to do this in my dance. I'm supposed to be doing this in my dance. Wow, that's not fun. And that's why I'm saying leaning into fun is like a revolutionary act. It's like, what do you want to do? You know, operate from the feeling of want. What does my true heart desire? I am choosing to, to dance because it heals me to be in my body. I'm choosing to dance because I care to be witnessed as someone who is a creative human being. I choose to dance because it's my way of being my own little God in this reality, this physical reality where I create anything that I desire. I wanna feel my creative power. That's why I dance. So I'm always encouraging people to lean into what you want. This is about what your how you are enjoying your life. Dance is a method for enjoying your life. And just by nature of you enjoying your life, you are inspiring other human beings, I promise. Just by you having a connection to your body and moving in your body and feeling joyful or feeling present and feeling full inside of yourself, it is so inspiring to other people. It truly is. So lean into your love for yourself and that will radiate out to others. And I am going to just scroll up here just to make sure I didn't miss anything. And um, I see what you habitually think becomes your reality. Thank you for sharing your joy. Thank you. Yeah, I, I thank you for validating my release statements about my habits, my habitual thought patterns. And it is work to release habitual thought patterns. You know, they come up and it's very tempting to go to, to further explore them. But what I'm realizing now through these dreams, through this opportunity in this new moon, is that I'm ready to release. Instead of moving into some of these thought patterns, it's just time to let them go. Just interrupt them and choose a different thought pattern. It's not easy all the time, but it's definitely worth the work. And thank you so much, Luna, for being here. And thank you for saying that I'm inspiring and watching my journey. You and I have known each other so long. That means a lot. Thank you. Okay, I had an idea that a fun way to end this would be for me to share my release statements, um, or rather, my I am statements, my affirmations that I sometimes sing to myself. Um, because, you know, writing something down is very powerful. I support 
the idea of writing something down to make it manifest. It is a physical action and a ritual that you can take in your life. I think just doing physical actions in order to set a new intention, in order to release, is extremely, extremely powerful. And sharing them out loud is also extremely powerful. So thank you everyone for being here to listen to me share this out loud because I think it's going to make my um, belief system journey, you know, even more ingrained and habitual and strong within me to have shared it with you. And you're so welcome, Miss Gada, for sharing. I am so happy to share this with you. Okay, so one way other than writing it down, lighting a candle, doing whatever ritual manifestation practices, release practices you like to do, um, I like to say certain prayers in the morning. And one of the things that I like to do is speak my I am statements into this drum. And so I thought that would be a fun way to um, end this live is to share my I am statements with you and encourage you to do the same for yourself because it's a short, fun, joyous thing that you can do. And you, anytime you're utilizing your physical body or your voice, um, you are engaged in healing the nervous system. And that is supported by science. It's not just woo-woo. Like moving your body and using your voice is healing for the nervous system. So I am always encouraging people to engage with these practices. And what better way to encourage you than to show you in a moment of vulnerability what I do. So here's sometimes what I sing into my drum. I am a dancing expression of love. I am a vessel for truth and beauty. I am a mover of bodies. I am one with the mystery. I am free. I hope you were able to feel the vibrations um, when you're when it's me in my body and my voice. I just feel this reverberation from the drum head coming back toward me. It feels amazing. Thank you so much for everyone who's here live and who chimed into the chat. And thank you to everyone who's watching this as a recording. Please write in the comments anything that spoke to you, that inspired you. And um, I would love to hear what you're chewing on artistically right now. And I would love to invite you to work more deeply with me. Just go to thecohesioncollective.com, fill out that quick form, and I will be happy to learn about you and tell you if I think we would be a good match to work together. And thank you for the comments that say you love hearing me sing and that I sing well. It's something that I do for joy and for fun. I have no uh, technical training. I would like to explore that part of myself a little bit more. And um, let's see what we have here. I sang with you as you sang. Oh, thank you so much, the floating grids. I resonate fully. Just today I spoke to a friend about singing and releasing through the throat chakra. Just trust the intuition of your body. That's what I want to spread out, is trust your joy, your pleasure, your connection to life, and know that it does make a difference and that you would deserve it. You are worthy of feeling joy and pleasure and connection. And also that we do not exist in a real scarcity situation. That's just an illusion and it's a constant temptation to operate in that mentality and sometimes it can even appear that it's working for you if you are being motivated to take action and you're feeling fiery and you find something appealing about that emotion of competition that spurs you forward but I'm encouraging you to move into the current of abundance of love of trust of leaning back and knowing that everything that you desire is coming to you and that you are capable of creating anything that you truly desire and that you are powerful and you are creative and you are deserving and you are worthy and that you can dance and you can sing regardless of what anybody has said. Thank you so much for being here everyone and I hope to 
chat with you in the DMs. Send me a DM, say how this made you feel, and I hope to work with you.